Merrill Pepcorn, State Senator from North Dakota District 44, representing North Fargo. Okay, 44 is on the east side of the state with Fargo, North Dakota. All right. And one of the reasons why we're bringing him on today, well, two reasons. Uh, first off, let's take a step away from your your senatorial duties for a second. Give, a, give, give me a nice plug for your entertainment business, how you've been making a living, because I love it. And, uh, you know, and it'll kind of set the stage a little bit that you and I have a little bit of a history uh, through this, through the media and et cetera, et cetera. So go ahead and uh, tell people how you're making a living these days. Yes, we do have some history. Well, you know, I went to college graduating in, well, way back in 1974. It didn't seem like way back just a few years ago, but now it does seem like that. Had a degree in speech, theater, and communicative, uh, communication arts. And uh, lo and behold, I just got a degree in that because, well, I found out that you could. And it turns out my life has basically been spent in those areas. I've made my living in radio, both uh, public commercial radio and uh, public radio. And I've also uh, been an entertainer playing in uh, various styles of band and currently play in a band called the Radio Stars Band. We play Western music. We play both bands, actually, Jason, country, and Western. And we do a lot of touring around Western North Dakota. And I also produce entertainment events, the most notable of which coming up is in August 16th and 17th of this coming summer, 2019, we're going to be able to do a two-day uh, 50th anniversary of Woodstock Festival at the Blue Stem Amphitheater in Moorhead, Minnesota. Oh, so, you're kidding me. combination of all those things. Oh, good for you. Good for you. In fact, um, yeah. on, on my Multimedia Cafe program, we talked about the 50th anniversary of Woodstock and how, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't think a, a lot of people realize that was kind of the first viral event, wasn't it? I mean, you know, it, it, people, what, 40,000 was expected and close to half a million showed up. Yeah, yeah. So, and everybody knows about it. You know, it's, it's so funny, Jason. The young kids know about it. The 20 year olds, 20 year olds know about it, 30, 40, no matter how old you are. You know about Woodstock, and you know the word "iconic" ever get it is certainly for Woodstock, the iconic rock festival. I'll tell you what, I was just having this conversation, and you remember the name Brad Anderson from the old KFGO Kiss oh, FM sure. days, um, yeah. that sort of thing. So Brad was uh, was in the media a long time, and an ra old yeah. radio guy, and we were talking about the the fiftieth anniversary of Woodstock, and he brought up a really good point. Nobody got hurt. Nobody got killed. And, yeah. you know, really, when you think about it, a concert of that magnitude today, when's the last time anybody of 25,000 people or more have gotten together and not broken out in at least one fist fight? <laughs> I yeah. Mean, you, there, yeah. There were half a million people there. There were 500,000 people there. And Mac, I've been going through old, uh, you know, there's been some documentary films made on it and some recordings. And Max Yasger, uh, the farmer who owned the land where they had the festival, came up on stage kind of unwillingly, and he did say, you know what, I think the world can learn something from you kids. Uh, I know there's about a half a million of you here uh, today, and uh, if the people could get along like you are, uh, we'd all be better off. So you, you're teaching the world uh, how to live together. So, yeah, that's what it was. There, there weren't any problems. There must have been a little ruckus here and there, but oh my gosh, it was, you know, it was a peaceful gathering of 500,000 and that true that, that truly is amazing you know and it took it took me to take a step back and really think about yeah. that a little bit you know yeah. that uh that's amazing and when you can get a half a million people together in today's modern era and not you know have to worry about essentially at the end of the day having security because everything just is, yeah. is so nice and anyway well th that's a good yeah. that, that's a good place to kind of transition back into your senatorial duties oh by the way um yes. Uh, yeah. How can people, if they want to con uh, hire you uh, for your Radio Stars gig, because we've got affiliates down in the Black Hills and in Wyoming, and I'm sure they'd yeah, love to well, have we you. we love it out there. We played a little bit out there in okay. South Dakota and eastern Montana, too, sure. Okay, so yeah, do, well, do, you, do you have a yeah. website or a Facebook page or anything? Yeah. Well, no, not really. It's just, it's <laughs> just me, Meryl Pepcourt. Well, I do have. Yeah, I do, but it's not for the band. I just have people call me. I throw my phone number out there, 701 <laughs> Two zero five two six six five. I mean, you found my phone number. Anybody can find it if you can find it, Jason. But it's, uh, we'll take calls on anything, whether it be uh, oil tax or entertainment or uh, uh, whatever it is. But it's a North Dakota number, 701-205-2665. So simple as that. I, I love it. Tw 2019, you got a website or a Facebook page? Nah, people could just contact me. 
I yeah. love it. Uh, yeah, just come on over. Sit down and have a cup of coffee, and we'll talk about what you want to talk about. Well, what we're going to uh, also talk about is we'll transition back to the senatorial yep. duties yep. now. Um, you, now, you've got a bill either you're a co-sponsor on or you're the chief sponsor on, yeah. and it has to do yeah. with going to get more money from the oil companies, either through an extraction tax or extending it, yeah. or to just kind of, kind of fill me in a little bit what the bill is and how it came about and you know the yep. sponsorship and all that. Will do. Very brief history. Back in the 50s when oil was discovered in North Dakota, it didn't take long to establish a 5% production tax which basically uh, served the same purpose as a property tax. Okay, so that's been in place, same rate, since the 50s. In 1980, due to an initiated measure, it's uh, a frequently used process to enact laws in North Dakota. It it, uh, begins in the citizenry with petition gathering and then voting, and it becomes law through the initiated measure system. Well, in 1980, a six and a half percent oil extraction tax, that's a tax on the amount of oil that comes out of the ground, was made law. Okay, that made the total effective rate 11 and a half percent tax on oil, the production tax and the extraction tax. That served us well, and well until 2015. Well, it turns out in 2015, the legislature lowered the extraction tax to five percent. And of course, then uh, that meant a lot less revenue from from the robust oil in, uh, industry. But why they lowered it is because in the law at that time there was something called a trigger. Mm-hmm. And if oil would, and I, I, I'm not exactly sure, so but we're close. It, it really isn't that important. But let's just say that that trigger price was at thirty dollars, and if oil fell be, below thirty dollars a barrel, that that extraction tax, that six and a half percent tax, would virtually be zeroed out and maybe it would be a half a percent very minuscule and that would have uh, been uh, really really tough times for the state government so i i don't know how these figures were arrived at uh how how it was made but when the legislature realized that we've got to get rid of this trigger that will eliminate the extraction tax we're also going to lower the tax from six and a half to five percent now what the public doesn't know what they don't understand because it's been spun in another way that the legislature could have eliminated the trigger but maintained that six and a half percent rate and over the past four years that would have meant uh almost well hundreds of millions of dollars i don't want to say a billion dollars but it would have made a difference of hundreds of millions of dollars over the past two bienniums. So that's the deal. The rate was lower to 5%, but it didn't need to be. It could have stayed at six per, six and a half while still, you know, uh, eliminating that trigger. So now we're just introducing a bill to restore it to that six and a half percent, which uh, served the state well for those 25, 25 years. Okay, so that's that's pretty much what the bill is, is that you're looking at increasing from it, five and a half to six. Yeah. From five, no, from five to six and a half. Oh, five to six and a half. Okay. Yeah, making the effective overall <laughs> rate with the production and extraction 11 and a half percent. You know, we just heard the state of the state speech a few years ago, and in that speech, the chief justice of the North Dakota Supreme Court came back. His staff was cut by 30 positions uh, uh, two years ago, and he, he needs an extra judge. He needs people working in his system, and the higher education is looking for a hundred million dollars over the next two years und and ndsu are two research universities for research to drive the future here of business in north dakota we have six major uh water districts they each have budgets of approximately 50 million dollars each where i'm from fargo they're asking for 50 million dollars for a red river water supply to get water from the missouri river to fargo moorhead for uh, economic uh, development purposes Water is always important, and they also are asking for fifty million dollars for flood diversion. So there's just an example of of some of the demands, some of the uh, let's not call them demands, some of the asks of state government for money. And I, you know, there's a lot of really, really good places to spend money, including our K through twelve education, and that's why we're looking to restore this tax to provide these services that'll make our state uh, healthier, not only physically, but uh, but mentally as well, just have us better prepared as a as a population. Here's um, 
some things that I, I like to bring bring up on this because yeah. obviously yeah, yeah. you know that I'm I'm a pretty big proponent when it comes to oil and gas. And, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Hey, you know what? I own 1.43 mineral acres. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're rolling you know, in it then. <laughs> I'm rolling. That doesn't make me an oil baron, but no, I know a little bit about them. I'm yeah. Mom Show County, and you know we're not out to shut down the oil industry for God's no, sake. No, oh no, we're, no. But anyway, you were going to say something, Jason. Well, I was going to say so. So there's some there's some things I guess I, I need clarification on a little bit because yeah, yeah. yep. you know I, yep. I I understand the the idea of taxes and the way they work and everything, yep. but yep. Th- this one kind of per- piqued my interest a little bit. For one, yep. um, no, no, I doesn't North Dakota have one of the highest uh, taxes already because we've got what a production tax and an extraction tax and if you put those yep. together it uh, it's like 10 yeah, um, 11 percent 11 and a half 11 and a half right yeah well yeah, yeah if with, yeah. with the six and a half percent extraction tax that would be 11 okay of course now uh, one thing i found out i wanted to find out exactly where we were yeah i i would say jason we're above the middle but we're by no means the highest. Alaska is way up there. I think Sarah Palin had something to do with that. But <laughs> they're, yeah. still, they're still doing all right. And Oklahoma is the lowest. And, you know, I know Oklahoma is struggling with their budget, with their school system and uh, and other public works that they do. So, you mm-hmm. know, we don't want to be down there either. But we don't need to be the highest uh, highest tax state. But uh, I don't think we're there. Maybe maybe you know better. Well, no. The, the only reason I bring it up is because yep. what, what I've learned about the oil and gas industry is, you know, a lot of times they can they, they can remove um, emotion if they have to when it comes to things because they got shareholders they gotta they, they gotta adhere yep. to and et cetera. And oh, yeah. I, I know yeah. that you know that was kind of a, a thing before in the past when it came up was hey if the numbers don't work. You know, yeah. what was it? What did I say to somebody earlier that um, sometimes it seems like when it comes to going up against the oil and gas industry, it's almost like they're there. Somebody's trying to play a game of chicken with them when at the end of the day, the oil and gas industry just plays the game of numbers. And that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Have, have you heard anything back from them? I, I know that they don't like this, but no, have you? Of course not. <laughs> and I understand. Though. Let's not kid ourselves. I yeah. One and a half percent. It is downward pressure on their business i mean it is an expense you know that, yeah. so they, i mean you can't say well this is this is a big benefit but but it's it's uh what i'll ask you this jason what's more important in determining where the where the drilling is where the oil activity is is it the price of a barrel of oil or is it would it be this one and a half percent tax well and that, that's where i'm getting at because some some of this is kind of um to me it gets a little bit tricky at times because um, I've and seen right there. Yeah, yeah I, I've seen them. You know, when when the numbers hit, it's it's they they can't even you know they don't have any question. They got to do it. Like I said, they got to adhere to shareholders. Otherwise, it's going to cost more. My my question would be, yeah. um, I I was I, I've said for years now. I believe that North Dakota has become very reliant on the oil and gas taxes and revenues and that sort of thing. I got that new I got that yeah. new press press release from the um uh Petroleum Council and the yep. Western Dakota Energy that uh, Brent sure. Bogar did. Yep. Uh, have you seen yeah, it that? It just happened to come out the day after that uh, my bill got a hearing date. <laughs> Oh, did it really? See, and, that's the difference. Too. They're so they're very well healed and well timed, and you've got a big PR agency and an advertising agency and staffs of attorneys and people watching all this stuff. Oh, that's funny because so, because I asked him about yeah. that. I said, "Was was this done in a way to kind of you know kind of squelch some of the political stuff and and you know and we kind of he talked more about the myth busting side of it. But what yeah. what I what, what I took away from that was that. Fifty percent of the state revenues depended on oil and gas, and yeah, what, I'll tell you what, you're, that, you're that, right. That, that's scary. It's too much. That's scary. It's too much. We need, but you know, we, we, we're stri- striving to diversify, and I think that's where our research universities, our education, our uh, other universities, our workforce workforce training we're working on right now, okay. developing under e- other industries. I mean, that is important. I mean, you just keep hammering away. You're not going to make giant leaps at one time, but you keep hammering away and developing new business and uh you know we can use some of this oil money too not to put oil money oil out of business it's going to be here but, well, so we don't hmm. become so reliant on it what, what i would pass along to you as a lawmaker because yeah. you know you you're you're, yeah. you're you're just one one of the voices out there and yeah. you know and, and quite yeah. honestly folks a lot of times when when uh lawmakers introduce a bill it's because one of their constituents wants it done 
And so yeah. that's, you know, that's Correct. sometimes how it's done. But uh, to me, this seems like it. Th- this is a conversation the state should be having now. If that, if there's that much reliancy, even to go a step further, when you look at the amount of people staying in hotels out there and they got to register their vehicles and pay the sales tax, but they don't necessarily live here because they're kind of oil and gas yep. nomadic oh, people. Yeah. Yep. I would even say close to 60% of that state revenue taxes come from the industry then. And and then even when you kind of go a little bit further, uh, there's quite a bit of donation given by the oil and gas industry. And I'm not, I'm not wh- where I'm going with this is that it almost seems like we're, we're um, going after more from them when we should be looking at what you mentioned a second ago, diversification. Now, this is an odd time to bring it up because you're introducing an oil, oil and gas extraction increase tax bill. Yeah, but, yeah. but do you know what I mean, Meryl, to where it seems I like... I do understand what you mean. Yeah, we and should so almost be I, looking at I'm, some other industries too here. Yeah, and we, and we have to use this income. You know what, Jason? Uh, people aren't going to be using lignite coal and oil forever and ever. I mean, eventually it's going to run out. There are, there are, new, there are always new things coming along in life. And so we do have to look ahead. We cannot just be sitting still and relying on what is here, especially when it comes to oil, because, you know, eventually, even with there's always new techniques to get more oil out, but uh, we have to watch, you know, what's the demand? What does the public want as well? And I think we have to be poised, uh, researching and looking to the future and seeing just what's there. What can be, what can we be working on? And even even when it comes to developing our natural gas, I mean, it's a shame we're just burning so much off because we don't have the capacity to store it and pipe it and sell it and use it. And that, that, that's kind of right in front of our noses, too, to, to make use of. But yes, you're right, Jason. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. We, but I would say we have to use this money while it is here, while it is our resource here in North Dakota to do those things you're talking about, about diversifying. I got to warn you, I got about 3% left on my phone here. Okay, and we'll, we'll wrap her up here. Um, I, I wanted to point one more thing about that study out yes. that um, I thought, you know, it, it shows how the state, you know, divvied out the, the, the money to different counties and everything. It was nice yep. to see like Williams County and Stark, some of the oil and gas uh, counties, they did get money. They, they did receive some oh, yeah. funds and, and that sort of thing. Oh, I voted for that. Yeah. I voted for that uh, bill, you know, of course. And yeah. they need it. They deserve it. They could use more. <laughs> some of that stuff, I mean, it's just ongoing, you know. Now that the activity is greater again, the, some of that wear and tear is back. But yes. Well, a, I, I, I tell you, the investment I'll, I'll tell you what, since you got just a couple bars left, I'll give you the last word here. You know, knowing yeah. that the pr- primarily the people that are listening are working in oil and gas profession yeah. or they're in oil and gas communities. So here you are. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, hey, I'll, I'll say this, folks. He's a decent guy, and he's just introducing a, a bill here that you, you, you're essentially asking for a percent and a half increase on an extraction tax or a yeah. production tax. Um, just explain to the people why, you know, the, the, the people obviously are saying no in their head. Go ahead. Try to convince them a little bit. Well, that's what I have to do to our uh, North Dakota legislators here, too, on Monday. <laughs> to talk to them in committee. Are we still connected? Yeah, we are. Yeah. I mean, oh, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I felt a little vibration in no, my phone. No, I'm giving you it's the floor. A, that, a, that uh, Go yeah, ahead. Sway, it's, sway the people. <laughs> it's a resource that we are sitting here on here in North Dakota. You know, we've got our own challenges. People don't necessarily like to come here. Why? Because of the weather. A lot of these oil workers and some of the Air Force based people who come and get stationed at our two Air Force bases, they wind up retiring. A lot of our oil workers who've been fortunate enough to come up here when things slow down and they were able to find a job, they like staying here because they like the quality of life of the people. So that's our resource, quality of life and people. But we have our own challenges to overcome. And uh, when it comes to, like I said, we're not trying to put the oil business out of business. We can use this 1.5% for our people, for the education of our young people. We're, we're hurting our, our, our long-term care, our nursing homes are struggling to keep their doors open and provide great care for our elderly who deserve it. Is this a resource we can use for them? I think I think that people will agree. If that's our, at our disposal, fine. Let's use it. But we need to use this money to diversify so that when oil does go away, not in your lifetime or mine, Jason, but eventually the future, there's something
something for people to look forward to in the future without relying on this completely. But in the meantime, we've met some great people. Hey, I'll tell you what, people who come out here for the oil boom, they come out here to work. And there have been other jobs. People come out to work in the hotels, in the convenience stores, in the restaurants. I've met some really nice, great young people who come out, and they consider that an opportunity for them. Because where they came from, there weren't jobs. So, yes, it does create jobs. We need to leverage that money that we're making from it into a more diverse economy and just keep it moving with some other in some other directions. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, Senator Merrill Pepcorn from... Uh what is it? Uh, Sixty? No, yeah. District Forty Four. District Forty Four, north near north side of Fargo. In Fargo, North Dakota. Well, Fargo, I pre- North Dakota. Yeah. I appreciate that, and uh, and 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 I uh, kudos to the courage for coming on on uh, on primarily an oil and gas yeah. very, very influenced yeah, program, right. and you know what is it? Kind of going in the lion's den a little bit, but I know we uh, always got an open bit. invite to anybody that wants to talk about any oil yeah. and gas topic so i appreciate it very that's much that's okay you know I, i'm not doing this uh just you know for so i can get on your radio show jason i appreciate the opportunity i'm doing this because people in my district this is what they want to hear this is what they want to see and see what we can do with it so well and we should the opportunity. well we should mention too in closing that one of the things we mentioned yesterday when we kind of talked about this is that this is a conversation that continues to yeah. come up over and over again and so we're just being a part of the conversation so i, I appreciate your yep. civil attitude jason hey thanks meryl take care Yep, you take care. Goodbye, everybody.